Hey guys, welcome back to the React and Golang full stack Kali Tracker application. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be working on our entries components. And in this file, uh, we'll be leveraging our single entry component that we had created in the, in the previous video. So we want to basically print out the multiple entries for calorie tracking that we have done. And we also want to have operations around adding new entries, so the ability to add new entries, ability to change ingredients, change uh, any entry and so on. So we want, we want to have that ability. Uh, there, there, there's, uh, you know, the main thing that we are returning from this file, the main thing in this file is going to be the entries component. And in this entries components, we'll have to define a couple of constants, but for now, for now, I will just show you what we're going to return from this function. So we'll have a div. In that div, we'll have multiple containers, but uh, in today's video, we're just working on two containers. And the first container has a button. The second container has entries. So we'll work with entries there. So in the first container, which has the button, uh, the button is going to have some text, right? It's going to have an on-click property and it's going to have some text. The text is track today's. So this is that button you see on top, uh, which you saw on the demo on the top left, which says to, uh, track today's calories. This is the starting point for everything in our program. And here on click, uh, the on-click property is going to have set add new entry. Set that true for now. It, it'll obviously say that this is not defined yet and we'll change that in a minute, don't worry. Um, here with the entries, what you want to do is you want to first check if they are null, not null. And if everything seems okay, you want to map them out like this. In the sense, you need access to the entry, every single entry and you need access to i, which is the iterator. Uh, you want to create one more bracket here, one more bracket here, one more bracket here, because you uh, want all the things inside this to have access to the entry, right? You want that. And here is where we'll be leveraging that, uh, you know, the entry component, which is going to help help us to render every single entry with all the values. Um, create one more pair of brackets, and here you will put the entry component that I've been talking about. And I will actually choose this. Okay, so here you'll have access to entry data is equal to entry. And you'll have multiple things here. So you have, uh, firstly, you just wanna, uh, you know, show the entry. And then you'll have multiple things like the ability to delete an entry, the ability to update the ingredients, the ability to update the entry itself. So here we'll say delete single entry. Now there will be functions obviously to uh, call the API using Axios and I'll show you two such functions in today's video itself. So we'll have change, I'll, I'll close this so that this becomes bigger. Gradient is equal to set change ingredient and set change entry to set change entry. Perfect. Now that we have that out of the way, what you want to do is we want to um, create functions. Firstly, I think we'll have to put a semicolon here. And we want to create functions to, uh, to help us with the calling the APIs. So let me create those functions. The first function that we'll work on is the change, the uh, add single entry, which is creating a new entry. So let's say function add single entry. I was just wondering which function to show you guys first. So add single fun, uh, entry looks like the simplest function. So here we'll say is set add new entry, false. And here is 
where you define your uh, API that you'll be hitting. So in our case, it's on 8000 that our Golang server is running. So we want to hit that API. Uh, the way we have created the routes are entry slash entry slash create. And I'm going to use the axios.post method to help me call the URL and send some data. The data that I'm going to be sending, uh, if you remember the struct that we have created in our Golang, it needs four things, right? Ingredients, dish, calories, fat. So I'm going to have new entry dot ingredients. I'm going to have dish. It will be new entry dot dish. I'm going to have calories, which will be new entry dot calories. Then I'll have some fat dot fat. But um, I'll have to use parse float here. So I'll say parse float. All right. Now you'll get some response and then you want to handle that. So you'll say getting the response if response dot status is 200. That means if everything went all right, you want to set refresh data. Now the refresh data is something that I'll show you in the next video. We'll create it somewhere here. So this was your adding a single entry. Or would you add a single entry? So um, now what the second function that we can create now, since we have time, is the delete single entry. So I'll say function delete single entry, which takes in the ID and takes in a URL. It's on localhost 8000 entry. Sorry, it's slash entry slash delete and plus the ID. So you want to, when you, whenever you want to delete something, you want to send the ID of that item you want to delete. Axios.delete. And you want to handle the response. So it's a response. If the response dot status is 200 then you want to set refresh data and that's about it actually so you you didn't you don't want to sorry by mistake of uh, close the uh, the bracket here which you don't want to and I'll check if I have not done the same yet no uh, here it, everything is okay Okay, so guys, this is it for today's video. I know we have a lot of uh, red squiggly lines, but all of them will go away because we'll take care of all of that in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. In case you haven't subscribed, please do. And I'll see you in the next video.